Chlorpromazine is often known by a brand name of Thorazine. It is an antipsychotic used for people with manic and schizophrenic disorders. It was considered groundbreaking for the psychiatric field. It allowed them to move on from barbaric methods of therapy like electroshock and lobotomies to something that has the potential to actually correct brain chemistry. Beyond its current relatively common use in psychiatric medicine, chlorpromazine has a really interesting background that starts in textile dyes. Did you ever think you'd know people who would ingest a chemical that has its roots in textile dyes industries? Well, there's where chlorpromazine gets its start. You see, all chemicals have multiple properties and thus a few potential uses. For example, a medication that the doctor prescribed to my fiancé is an antihistamine. However, they didn't prescribe it to him for that. They prescribed it to him for nausea. This strong antihistamine would knock him out and thus he wouldn't be nauseous any longer. All chemicals have the property to be more than one thing. So the dye that started the journey to clopromazine, that's methylene blue, or it's a general chemical name, phenothiazines. These phenothiazines had an interesting side employment as both antiseptics and antihelminics, which just happens to mean that they're a parasite destroyer. The phenothiazines had a potential to be an antihistamine as well, but its toxicity meant that the multitasking dye didn't get any employment in that area. Instead, scientists started fooling around with the properties by adding different chemical groups to it. Paul Ehrlich was looking for a bactericide, and he found Tripton Red. Schulman and his team developed an antimalarial from the research that was used to great effect in World War II. And then a research team, which was led by a guy called Gilman, fooled around a bit more and lost the effect of the antimalarial. It was this supposed dead end that showed some antihistamine properties that weren't so toxic. And that's where a French army surgeon named Henri-Marie Laborit appears on the scene. His goal was to save lives by preventing the body from going into shock during surgery. He realized that surgical shock was caused by an excessive reaction to stress. Laborit knew that suppressing or inhibiting either the peripheral or the central automatic nervous system would be advantageous. After testing several things on wounded soldiers in World War II, Laborit stumbled upon a few drugs, including chlorpromazine, that would pad the patient from surgical shock. However, he didn't get to the chlorpromazine right away. It hadn't been discovered yet. In 1950, Laborit's line of research on surgical shock was further advanced by Paul Carpentier. It was Carpentier that discovered chlorpromazine, and even he was astounded by the fact that not only did he have antihistamatic properties, but it also had parasympathetic and adrenalytic characteristics. This means that at low doses, it could cancel out the effects of adrenaline on blood pressure, and at higher doses, it was shown to invert the impacts. This was the drug that Laborit had been looking for. He tried it out on new patients and found that patients not only felt better after the operation, but also felt more relaxed and calm in the preoperative time. And although Laborit had the idea that this type of medication would help people with mental conditions, it was at this time that he thought more strongly about the idea and began to invite other doctors, including those from the psychiatric area, in to witness the phenomenons. But they weren't all that enthused by the idea. Regardless, Laborit convinced his colleagues from the Neuropsychiatric Service to study it further. On January 19, 1952, it was administered for the first time in conjunction with a barbiturate and an opioid to extremely agitated manic patient. This patient began to calm down rapidly, and by 7 February, the patient had calmed down enough to be able to play a civil game of bridge and carry out normal tasks. Although there were further studies before chlorpromazine made it to the mainstream options for treatment, this was the turning point that opened up avenues of therapy that weren't based on barbaric methods such as electroshock. Sadly, we've been looking for and haven't found any modern ethical lab uses for chlorpromazine that we can use in our labs. We haven't found any that it means yet. When we do, we'll have to show off an experiment to show you how you can use chlorpromazine in the lab. Until then, are there any biologists out there that want to show off this chemical and its uses?